every parent, and I understand that, is terrified to use medication for symptoms in their child that they think would be quite natural, even if those symptoms are handicapping the child's progress, both educationally and socially, which is where ADHD has its main focus. And there's been many attempts from fine gold diets and way back in the past to in the modern era where there are lots of things on health shelves, health supplements, diets that are proposed to help children with ADHD. It might be interesting to know that Feingold never did any research um, when he published his diets. So today we are a bit more concerned about evidence. We want to know in what way these medications make a difference. But before I start about that, I want to just explain two things. The way that our bodies react to whatever we put in our mouths, and that includes most toxins as well, is genetically predetermined. And there's three types of people on this planet, mostly. And I will explain it like this. If we had to give each person a half a bottle of red wine to drink, you would have one of three reactions to it. First of all, nothing would happen. That is a group that's pretty fast metabolizer, so they don't have a problem. Then there's a group that would just fall asleep. And then there's a third group who would become extremely amorous or they would start fighting. So we have these three kinds of people. And so among ADHD children, there are also these three kinds of people. And so you can see that there's a third whose symptoms may get worse with certain dietary interventions. It's not true that all children respond to diets, but there are some children where diets could actually modify their behavior somewhat. There is not good evidence to show that sugar plays a role, although I lived in Canada for many years, and the day after Halloween, all children are kind of ADHD, so sugar probably makes people a bit hyper. But again, it has to do with how people manage and metabolize various things. But nonetheless, there is this thing about diets. So let's look at this issue of diets. There's been a lot of research lately looking at meta-analysis. Meta-analysis means we've taken all the research ever done, we take the best of the studies, we combine all of these things, and we look, if we look in general, so now we have like thousands and thousands of subjects, which of these things worked? And there's some fascinating data that's come from that. Again, I just have to backtrack to explain one second thing. We talk about the efficacy of an intervention. Now, this efficacy is expressed as a number. If I have a sore throat, and it's a streptococcus infection, and I know if I take penicillin, I will get better, the effect size is one. So one means it's 100% effective. Now, if we look at medication for ADHD, and that's the stimulants and the non-stimulants, their effect size hovers between 0.88 to 1.14. That is super effective. In fact, it's the most effective medication for a specific condition that we have in medicine. And you may laugh, many of you might be using SSRIs or antidepressants, majority of them effect size 0.45, just under 50-50. Just to put it in perspective. So the medication is highly effective for this condition. So let's look at dietary interventions, and I'm just going to mention three. There's elimination diets, there's food colorants, and there's the omega-3s. Those are the three that have some research. Diets. Elimination diets means you put a child on a very bland diet, and then gradually you introduce other foods until you find one that triggers the ADHD. Most of the time, these children are on lactose-free, gluten-free type diets, and then gradually things are increased. The research shows that it has no effect in ADHD. In other words, there is no effect size. It doesn't seem to make much of a difference. Interesting enough, food colorants did come up and does make a difference. So there are some children who are sensitive, and I think it's those third that I've mentioned, who is particularly sensitive to some of the food colorants. I think all children should actually have natural diets as far as possible and have good food. 
So yes, we should eliminate them in all children, but if your child is one of those children who are really sensitive to the food colorants, then try and avoid them to some extent. And one of the guides is, whatever you buy that says it is something but it doesn't have it in it, it's not what it is. I'll give an example. Orange flavored drink means there's no orange juice in it. It's purely chemical. Stay away from that. Buy the natural ones. As far as possible, I think it should be, that should be done for all children. The only thing is the effect size is pretty small. It's about 0.2 and it doesn't affect many people. The third one is the omega-3s. There's been lots of research done about omega-3. I think it is an important supplement in children with ADHD because the majority of ADHD children only like starch. So they are the pizza, pasta, bread eaters and porridge because they don't like to chew. And so the omega-3s are low. So it's probably worthwhile always supplementing with omega-3. Although it has come up as an important cofactor in ADHD, effect size is only 0.12 really small effect size, but in the right direction. But if you're going to use diet, that's the one supplement that has some scientific merit. I know parents always want to use all kinds of supplements. You have to be careful what you buy on the shelf. Everything that says that it works for ADHD has never been proven to work. You can spend a lot of money making expensive urine. So the best supplement to use is omegas. And because they have such bad diets, it's probably not a bad idea to use a general multivitamin, and most multivitamins would be fine that you can use. But again, the dictum is, if some foodstuffs upset your child, avoid it. But when it comes down to it, bang for your bucks. If your child has significant ADHD, no diet or dietary intervention will be effective enough to make your child more functional, then medication certainly may play a role.